Hi, my name's Kathy Millett and welcome to my rainy day diorama. Yep, when it's sunny outside, what do I think of? Rain, of course. But I've been wanting to do a diorama that was a little bit quirky and different. And I started to build this one and I just thought, rain. I've been wanting to do these Hydrocal Classic American blocks for years. For the diorama base, I like using a picture frame. I take the glass out and the base of it, which will be foam, will be able to sit down in this and there's a nice firm wooden back to hold it in. For the base of the diorama, I'm using this quite dense foam. It's called craft foam and you can get it on Amazon. It sometimes used to be called blue foam. And then I'm just gonna cut it to size so it fits inside. A couple of light passes with a knife are best and then you can just snap the remainder. I opened up the kit and read the instructions. It's important to read instructions on kits like this because sometimes all of the walls need to go together in a certain order or it doesn't work. If there's any flash on the back, take it off with some sandpaper. Do not sandpaper the front edge. You need it to match up. And any detail areas, be really careful you don't destroy that brickwork and stonework detail on the side. I use five minute epoxy to glue the parts together. Do not use too much glue or it'll ooze out the back and then use some set squares or blocks, one, two, three blocks and squares as I've got here to make sure everything is lined up. I like to use the lines on my cutting mat to make sure everything is square as well. When that epoxy was set, I glued in a triangle of card, which was conveniently provided with the kit. The card that is, I had to cut the triangle, but it's a nice square corner to make sure this stays together. This corner needs the shop front to stay upright, so I glued that together too, using a plastic cement. Then it's just a case of building a nice square building. The roof can help here because it's a perfect square corners, so it can really help you line things up. I had to sand the last wall just to get it to fit slightly. One of the walls was slightly um, thinner at the top and bottom than it was in the middle, and I was able to sand that shape in, which was very helpful for getting a nice snug fit. I did one final check that everything was square and I left it to set up overnight. Oops, I dropped my 3D printer on it, don't ask. Anyway, easily fixed with a little bit of extra epoxy and you can glue it back in place. Um, it still shows, even when I've done this, it often fits perfectly, but then the thickness of the glue is just enough to make it have a little gap and show even when painted. So what I'm gonna do is either put an ivy or a vine or a bush or something across there if it's still showing when it's all finished and done. Now I cut out all the windows and doors. They're on sprues and sprue nippers make quick work of it and a quick file as well to get rid of any of those nubs. They really make it look more realistic. Now I needed to use the plans that are in the photos to work out which doors went where. I test fit each of the doors and windows in place and in most instances I needed to scrape a little bit of plaster away with an X-Acto blade. I also needed to add some styrene strip on this set to get them the right width otherwise there was an unsightly gap. But I glued them square and flat on my work surface to make sure everything lined up and this is just thin plastic cement. This is the time to fill any corners that you have, like this outer corner here. You can hide the odd one with a drain pipe, but in this instance, two pieces of masking tape will stop your putty from spreading. And this is an acrylic Vallejo putty. I just put it on with a cocktail stick and then use it to reform the corner. I find this really easy to use and the masking tape stops it going everywhere. So you end up without losing all your brick mortar lines. There's a danger you can fill them in otherwise. When you're done, just tamp the edge down to make sure there's no harsh line. Often the roofs supplied in kits are a little bit large to allow for discrepancies. So I cut mine and sanded it and then cut back the too high cardboard braces in the middle and then put it in place. Now the ends would be in midair, which is never good. So I just glued on some wooden sticks that I had. These are actually coffee stirrers, but I glued them in place with super glue and a quick squirt of accelerant sealed the deal. More super glue attached the roof and I just left it all to set up with a couple of weights to make sure nothing moved when I wasn't expecting it to. When it was set, I needed to add the tops of the dividing walls. So I roughed up the roof and then used more super glue in those sticks because they happened to be on the side and put them in. When it's painted, no one will know they're wood. 
Finally, I put all my detail parts, everything ready to paint. Now to paint, I like to use automotive car primer. And I tend to do buildings with red oxide because it's a great color for the brick. And sometimes I will just leave that color and not bother doing anything else with it for brick because it's a beautiful brick color. This time I wanted to add a couple more layers. So we'll get to those in a minute. I made a decision at this point though, that I wanted to make some interiors. Very simple and I wanted to show you the technique. So I marked where my doors and windows were and then I cut through the hydrocal. This took some time and it's not the easiest thing to do because it's quite thick, but with perseverance, an X-Acto blade will go through and then you can just tidy up with a file. Before I did any more painting, it also occurred to me that I should cut my pavement to size so that when I start putting final coats of paint on, I'm not then cutting them up. Now, this is my diorama base in its picture frame frame. So I just made sure that the edges went to the frame edges as well and glued everything down with just some white glue. It's quite thick, but it's not smeared on. So the air will get in and it will dry through the plaster over time and I used a square to make sure it was square, quite important on a road. I also checked it against the building to make sure it looked reasonable there. I sprayed a variety of base colors onto the primer then using my airbrush to get a nice even covering. Doesn't that cup of my airbrush look really foamy? I had a little bit of backflow where um, I guess I hadn't cleaned it quite properly. So um, yeah, it sprayed all right, but it didn't half bubble. Um, thankfully it cleaned through as I sprayed a lot more paint because this was only the first colour that I sprayed. I used a bit of card just to stop the white overspray going onto my bricks and I painted in some of the white areas. I actually went back and hand touched everything up again later, but this gave me a good starting coat. I also spray painted all of my detail parts into the colours for their respective buildings. Next up was the mortar. Now, I could have used a pigment or pastel on a deeper line, but this is actually quite shallow and I was worried they would just wipe straight back out again. So instead I used Vallejo, a racky sand and a very, very dilute coat. And I had to put it on a couple of times to get enough depth. Now it does change your brick color. So you do need to be willing to go over and dry brush a new brick color over the top. I put lighter covering on some areas and a darker covering on others just to give a slight differential to the brick. They all would have been fairly local and so similar coloured bricks, but it just divides these different sections of the building up. The trick to this technique is in its name, dry brushing. Your brush needs to have very little paint on it or you'll get splodges like you can see on the left. If you do fill in the mortar lines a little bit, don't worry, leave it to dry. We can come and fix that later. There's always a way to fix it. I also picked out all the details. You can see I've done the door here in white and I'm doing the lintels in the same as the mortar color really. It just needs a steady hand and they are slightly raised or there's lines to guide you. If you get it slightly wrong, we can go round it with a wash later and those darker lines of the wash will help frame these areas. Weathering makes a huge difference and I used winter streaking grime by AK Interactive along with some white spirit in a glass container and I just dip it on little spots into all the cracks and it runs along. I find that white just looks too stark so I smear with my finger and thumb a little bit of the streaking grime over the surface and it just knocks it back a bit and gives it depth. I also paid attention to the bottom of the building where it's going to touch the ground. That's so important that that stays weathered. And again, smear it up so you get a nice gradation. It's pretty much the same on all the buildings. And I do use this technique to add some dark mortar lines as well for a bit of variety. Don't forget to do the tops of your roofs. They need dirtying up too, as do all your doors and windows. For my simple interiors, I'm using some photos I've just got off Google of the relevant interior for whichever building I'm doing. And I've printed them all out at the height of the buildings and then I'm mounting them on cards and I'm gonna bend them so they curve. So my card diagonally goes from one corner of the building to the other. I also couldn't resist lighting it. And as there's plenty of space for wires under my buildings, 
that's how I'm going to get the wires in there. I'm using the strips of LED you can buy. You see them in a lot of projects now and they're very simple to use. For models you can cut them into sections of three so each of the spaces got three LEDs and I soldered on leads making sure I kept the plus and minuses and then soldered them onto a bus wire which I hot glued in place to make sure that nothing could move. I did use shrink wrap where I could but where I couldn't I used hot glue as a separator. To plug it all in, I drilled a hole in the outside of my frame and inserted a socket. It's one I can just wire up with a couple of screws when I finally install my building. Finally, I added a little bit of white glue to my interiors and slotted them in place. Then I checked that it worked. Yes, I have a light. However, it's just a little bit too bright. I want it a bit more diffuse. So I put in some packaging material that I had that will put a nice diffuse glow on it. The kit supplies black paper to tar paper your roof. Now this is a good old tried and trusted modeling method. You cut the paper into strips. These are half an inch wide. Then you glue them onto your roof a strip at a time. I bent the edge up on this one because the tar paper goes slightly up the walls to do a waterproof seal. I measure each piece in situ and use my thumb to mark the edge. It's quick and easy. Trim it with a pair of scissors and also the corners on the front so they don't sit neatly. And then just install it with some, I use ultra tape, but it's a nice strong glue stick. The observant amongst you will have noticed I've actually swapped to the back. That's because you should lay the back tar paper first and then all the subsequent layers overlap it, sitting just about a mil overlap on top. Why do you do that? Because water generally they have a slope downwards towards the back for drainage, they're not totally flat and so they want the water to flow like tiles down a roof. Another method you see for doing the edges is a separate bit of tar paper they've put over the top. It's your choice. I went over the tar paper roofs with some black grey, it's a Vallejo colour and it just allowed them to look not just plain black. I needed a few detail parts that weren't in the kit, so I got some bins off Thingiverse and 3D printed them. I tried doing a Sharpie, but over the white it didn't look right, so I painted a gloss black, tried a silver paint, that didn't look right, so I went back to the silver Sharpie, which gives you a nice dull silver, much like a galvanised bin, which I presume is what they had in the 50s, which is when this is set. To finish them off, I added a couple of different colours of army painter washes. I bought a set the other year and I'm using them because they're acrylic so they won't lift the Sharpie off where an enamel set of washes probably would. I wanted a man with an umbrella walking fast through the scene. I couldn't find anything but an umbrella on its own on Thingiverse and my mini factory. So I downloaded that and also went to make human who will create you little men. I got my little man and I rigged him in Blender and then 3D printed him. That makes it sound like it was quick. It wasn't. It took me a day and a half to do this. But I now have a little man 3D printed. Oh, and that took longer on top, another four hours, but 3D printed and ready to go on. I just need to paint him. I painted first of all the flesh, which is a Vallejo flesh base. All the paint colours are down in the description. And then I have a life colour set of five or six blacks. And I used different ones of those so that his clothes would have plenty of variety and wouldn't all be the same colour black. I used the Army Painter wash set. This is flesh wash plus a couple of other colours to add some depth to the paint job. Whilst I had them out, I used the Army Painter washes to add some depth to my awnings and a few other areas as well. The kit comes with a paper canopy and signs. I wanted to try staining them in Photoshop, so I went to textures.com, which has an amazing selection of stains, brick walls, whatever you need. I cleaned up the signs by drawing around them adding text again. I changed the name on this one and some of them I left as they were, but then I added stains, manipulated them, made them quite pale and then reprinted them again. I scanned the front doorway and created a quick porch pattern in Photoshop. 
I use scotch tape to add an invisible clear film over the front. It's brilliant for signs and you just literally put it over them and then burnish it with the back of your thumb to give it a nice finish. I just use super glue because I didn't want the water in white glue to distort my signs. I made sure they were lined up and glued them all on. Then I went on to the windows and doors, which have individual pieces of acetate for every single window. It's just time consuming to cut them out. Sometimes you don't quite measure right, in which case you can file them down so that they fit. A couple of small spots of glue, probably one on each corner, is all I use. You don't want it to show through on the acetate. I did cover one area which had something behind it with white paint and then installed all of the glues using white glue again. Do not use super glue, it will cloud your acetate. Next I folded up the canopy. This is easiest done over a ruler, it gives a nice crisp edge. And when you've done that I put in some card just to make sure it was nice and stiff, just using a glue stick to attach it. And finally, I coloured the edges that were white with a black Sharpie so they didn't stand out and show that it was paper. Quick test fit and I was done. I didn't install the other awnings at this point, but I wanted to put this one on upside down. So I used super glue and a zapper and I was done. The floor checker pattern went in much later, but here it is just to show that I fitted it. Finally, I added some greenery to cover that crack and also some of the joins which didn't look that great. I'd always planned to do it so I haven't particularly worried about them. Um, greenery is wonderful for this. I just used white glue and Selkirk leaves. It's as simple as it looks. You put the glue down, you put the leaves on. I would normally be really worried about shiny spots, not in this instance because it's going to rain later. So on to the base, tarmac or asphalt. Built up first of all with layers of card, so it's the right height for this 2mm EVA foam. It's craft foam from Hobbycraft, it's really easy to use and I like the texture for roadways. It'll squish a little, so if you don't get it perfectly right, it's not a problem. I cut away a bit of the card to allow for the hot glue on my wiring and move the hole slightly. It all took a little bit of fettling, it's worth checking it fits properly at this stage. And then it was on to doing the foam. You can mark it really easily with your fingernails or a pencil. And I cut it a little large and then cut it down to size later. It just means you'll get it closer to the edge. I still have a little gap and I'll fill that later. I use super glue to glue down the foam onto the card. I actually use white glue to the card onto the base and just weighted it with bricks for quite a while. But super glue works well for putting this down. I only went around the edges, but I did weight it to make sure it stayed where I wanted it to. Check the fit again and then drew around the building so I knew where to paint the difference between the inside and the outside colours. The other side is identical, but the card doesn't come quite up to the sidewalk or pavement because I want a camber. So where the foam meets that, it goes straight down onto the base. So there's a little bit of height in that sidewalk. Did some drains and a manhole cover. Very easy to do, foam is so easy to cut. Just go around it with a knife and then cut it out. I also added some potholes using exactly the same method. I also put loads and loads of tarmac cracks in just to add a little bit of interest to what's otherwise a very plain and boring surface. At this point I hit a bit of a snag. The foam was a little too high, my card layer beneath was too thick. So rather than try and glue it down and weight it down in some horrible way, I just cut it out and replaced it with some card instead. I wanted to add a little bit of texture so I used Woodland Scenics Talus and Chinchilla Dust which is a bit finer and I just sprinkled them on. This took a little bit longer than I expected as they bounce all over the place and there's some kind of staticky thing going on with the foam. I'd put the building in place to get that edge nice and crisp so I soaked it all in isopropyl alcohol and water, one third isopropyl alcohol, two thirds water before removing the building so at least these will stop bouncing around and wouldn't just fly away and doing all the work that I'd done. I think I was mostly successful. Finally, I sprayed with a dilute white glue mixture. This is one sixth white glue, sort of five six water to get it to spray through a fine spray brush. And then I just tidied up the frame with a bit of kitchen roll to make sure it looked neat and tidy still. I added three layers of a dilute acrylic 
paint. It was warm grey and Payne's grey put together. I didn't feel the need to make it particularly thick and I wanted it to run round all of those stones. I dabbed it on with a disposable brush because it makes it easier to not dislodge them. You're not brushing them sideways. The only thing I will say is that um, I did go up the side a little bit and I may have to go up and touch the black up again at the end. Once that was all dry, I added on some acrylic Vallejo black wash to bring out the detail. I just put it on with a brush and let it sit into those cracks. I really wanted to make sure those cracks had put on showed up and the wash brings them out nicely. But when it dried, it was a bit blotchy. So I went over it again with just a sponge disposable brush dabbed on so they got a nice grey pattern. Round the back, I tried it and I used it to highlight all the stones, but when it came to doing the actual tarmac itself, I moved on to using a kitchen roll pad. It just gave a bit of a smoother finish and I wanted the two to look different. I used the same black acrylic wash to make the gutter puddles just stand out a little bit. I just put it on and then I used water to dilute it and spread it. It all looks quite dark at this point, not to worry. This is what it looks like when it's dry. I put on five, yes, five thin coats of paint. It's a mix of natural and warm grey artist acrylic colours thinned down a lot with just water. Why so many coats? Because each one is blotchy, which means that over time you build up a natural patina. The grey underneath darkens some areas, but overall it becomes a nice varied area. I also added in some paler patches under the awnings where they're going to go and then added some warm grey in between just to tie everything together. These thin layers have left all the detail in the castings so a wash, this is a neutral wash by MIG, over the top will bring out all that detail and again add more colour and depth to your pavement or sidewalk. Finally, in the photos, the edge of those lighter areas is normally slightly blackened. I guess it's mould, so I did that too. I glued the buildings down. First of all, I wired in the street light and the buildings to the plug socket and then just used neat white glue. I added in all the final details. I use white glue for some, but cyanoacrylic for others. And when you're doing small detail bits, you have to hold in place. A zapper sprayed on with the glue on your part makes it much easier as it sets as soon as you touch it. However, awnings need a little bit of wiggle, so I sprayed those afterwards. Where at time wasn't an issue when the item was just going to sit there like this bin, I just used white glue. But metal items like the drain pipe do need super glue. My pet hate is building gaps, and they're easily covered with this Woodland Scenics Earth Blend Turf or something equivalent, maybe a bit of tile grout. I titivated it, paying careful attention to how it looked when it was running down a street. It's been raining recently, so that's been useful. Other things that went on were coarse turf by Woodland Scenic, sill floor, grass turfs, more earth blend and green blend, especially on the roof. You need to make sure that they don't look boring because it's one of the main bits you see of a building. And then finally, I put some shrubs down the side. These are by Martin Welberg, who does the amazing Mara Harbour layout and they just added a bit of much needed greenery. I added more turf to any bits that I'd missed and tidied it away from areas that I didn't want it before adding on some chamomile tea leaves, love them, and I cut up some flyers and used those to add some splashes of colour. To glue it all, I sprayed it well with isopropyl alcohol and water. That's just one third isopropyl alcohol, two thirds water. And then I did spray it with a dilute glue, but it doesn't fix the thicker areas as well. So I went over those with this dripper, which is a stronger mix. It's about one third white glue to two thirds water. And if you put too much on, you can wick it away with a kitchen towel. And then it was time to make it rain. I was worried that glass varnish wouldn't quite give a gloss depth. It's quite thin, it's just a paint, and it did turn out to be founded. So I used AK Interactive Still Water, which you can use for puddles. It does say don't do it more than three mil deep. So I just dotted it on and spread it around with a brush and made sure it looked nice and even. I sprayed on some water, just plain water without the isopropyl because I didn't know how it would react. 
AK Interactive Still Water is an acrylic product and I've been putting it mostly on the puddles now to build them up and on the roofs where I want it to look nice and wet but I need the road surface to look wet too and I need it to spread which I didn't it just won't it's a bit too thick so I sprayed some water in the hope that it would encourage it to spread like isopropyl alcohol encourages glue to spread through materials and I've got to say it did so I did exactly the same round the back for the back alleyway. One area that worried me was this canopy. I had sprayed it with clear lacquer to protect it, but when I'd done the original isopropyl alcohol and glue coat, it had wrinkled a lot, which was great because I wanted to do a sagging um, type of awning and I couldn't work out how to get it to sag. And it sagged really well for me all on its own. Um, there were some hair raising moments and all I would say is quite often things will straighten out when they dry. So don't panic when things are wet. Let them dry up and then assess the damage. I was very generous with that water. It did go everywhere. Onto the canopies and awnings, anywhere there's a downpipe. I just wanted to make sure that everything that should be wet was wet. And I filled up the puddles again. The next stage didn't work. I used Vallejo Gloss Varnish, an entire bottle of it, because once the water had dried off, the road didn't look quite as glossy as I wanted it to. Now this didn't work for one reason, which is very obvious. There isn't enough oomph. There's just not enough body in that small bottle of gloss varnish to spray everything. The other thing is, wherever you put it on with a airbrush, it wasn't getting enough density and depth on these matte surfaces to build up a gloss. I needed something thicker. So I took it outside and used a can of gloss plasticoat sealant. It's a nice thick gloss varnish. I've used it to seal cosplay before and it goes on and gives a nice coat. I think I was a bit too close to the roof because I did get some bubble effects in there, which is fine because it looks like raindrops, which is one of the effects I was after. It created a nice thick gloss. It was a bit of blow back onto the windows, which I'm not that fussed about. And it didn't go anywhere where there was an awning. So that was good. It was like real rain. I made sure I held it very vertical to, to get that effect. And any of the AK Interactive and Gloss Varnish underneath left some nice streaming water effects on the roads. I left that overnight and then topped up my puddles. Next up is HO Scale Raindrops. Not the easiest, so I built myself a couple of test pieces, had a go and decided that the natural sponge gave the best effect. And I just added raindrops. Finished. So this is where I hit a snag. Now, if you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments below. But I tried two things. Printing on my home print, which is an inkjet onto acetate. It will only print black, I can't print white and it's smeared and I couldn't, even though it was fine, it just didn't look good. I then tried a white pen. It's a Woodland Scenics road marking pen. Can't get that to work either. Just doesn't look fine enough. So I went into Photoshop where I can get a beautiful rain. Is it cheating? Hmm. I'm not sure, but I certainly like how the pictures look. And I guess it's no different to adding a bit of smoke to a steam locomotive, which you see people, or a sky. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below and if you have any better ideas. Well, I really enjoyed making this and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, there's a list of all the materials and tools and everything that I used in the description below. There's also a link to my website where you can see some photos that inspired me and some more photos of the finished result. Subscribe, hit that little bell button to get notifications, do all the usual, and thank you as ever to my patrons. I wouldn't be able to do dioramas like this without their support. You mean the world to me. Thank you. So that's it till next time. Stay safe.